in to the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Use code DNVR to sign up for a new account and get amazing odds boosts every single day. Rudo and AJ coming to you. Uh, our plan today was to talk about some of the playoff races, including how the Avs have done down this playoff push stretch, which we will get to all of that. But first of all, the Avs use their final call up post trade deadline pretty early. Uh, a month left in the season when they use that call up and they use it on Alex Galchenyuk. Um, I'm down. See how this goes. Obviously the lucky injury kind of forces your hand with the Colorado needing to, to make another call up there. AJ, how do you feel about the Galchenyuk call? It's certainly interesting, isn't it? I mean, the whole is, like, is it? It's, like, it feels like not surprising at all to me in a lot of ways. Sure. I mean, how it's going to go, I think, is going to be fascinating because the whole kind of like Galchenyuk Colorado experiment was let's try and put him at center. Let's see sure. how he does in the AHL. You know, let's kind of get let Greg Cronin Develop get into any the... amount of defense there. Yeah. 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 And let's see. Let's see what happens when he kind of gets into the, you know, the, the AHL school starts breaking some of his game down into some of the fundamentals and. Um, you know, like Megan had done some great reporting earlier this year on things that Galchenyuk was working on in the sure. AHL. And, uh, you know, the uh, the impact that it was kind of having on him and, and, and him trying to develop certain habits and, um, you know, just, just be committed to certain areas of the game that, frankly, had, had kind of cost him his NHL career uh, at that point because offensively he's still a dynamite player. Uh, and has been a dynamite player at the NHL level. So, uh, you know, I think seeing just just kind of seeing, you know, and it's only it's only 33 games in the, in, in with the Eagles, so it's not sure. like not know. an eternity down there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not like he disappeared for like 3 or 4 years and then came back up. Uh, but, you know, 33 games, let's, we'll see how it let's see what kind of uh what what kind of impact it had because the four brief games that we got to see him earlier this year in an Av sweater before he really got going with the Eagles um, were very predictable and not very yeah. encouraging. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, I'm interested to just see, you know, I'm, uh, I have tempered expectations, but the guy's been so dynamite for that depleted Eagles roster it, that it, his offense is certainly just too good for that league. When you see you see the the goals that he's been able to score, especially on a power play down there, yep. Uh, where you're just like his shot is just it's it is better than most AHL goaltenders uh, can handle. Yeah, it just beats goalies down there. Not particularly close. I think he does has done a particularly good job at that level of being able to find the soft spots in the ice as well. Yeah, I um, mean, 15 goals in 33 games is quite a pace to be on. Yeah. It, if he can give you even three or four in these last 20 games, I think you probably feel pretty good about it at the NHL level. Now, yeah. how much opportunity does he realistically get in the NHL? We've talked quite a bit about the Avs weird lineup going on in their bottom six with Alex Newhook on a fourth line, sort of. Let's Let's start there. Can you put Galchenyuk and Newhook together, or are you giving up too much on the defensive side in the bottom half of your lineup? Because we're going to we'll find see. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of the big, the kind of the big question there. Because one of the reasons that you have had success with a guy like Morgan uh, uh, as a role player is that he does work to to try to take care of the defensive end of the ice, uh, so that he can go do the fun things with the puck on the other end. Um, you know, anytime you're talking about a guy whose game is, is most known for skill related things, you are curious how it's going, how they're going to translate into more of a traditional role player role, you know, 10 to 12 minutes, you know, not, not going to spend a lot of time on a, on a power play. Not going to, you know, not going to be sitting, you know, riding shotgun next to Nathan McKinnon or Miko Rantanen. Like, how does how does he do? But defensively, it does. I think it does up the ante for if he does end up with uh, with an Alex Newhook on a line. 
Um, it does up the ante for New Hook to make sure. <laughs> you have to make sure that you are you are checked in that yeah. game. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm just curious. Exact. I, you know, I, I, I'm going to say long term plan. What it, I'm wondering what that is, and the long term plan might be. I, he needs to survive two weeks until Lucky can reasonably play again, or it might look more like a month. I don't actually know, but I just not sure exactly how the forward lineup shakes out with Galchenyuk in. Um, you know, allegedly Dennis Malkin might get a game or two in the top six, which we'll see. He's had those before. I'm not gone well. Yeah, I, my my expectations are pretty tempered there. This feels pretty similar to the Logan O'Connor chance up there that he got last year. <laughs> where, it, look, as long as it's working, great, ride it. But you know that thing's going to come crashing down to earth eventually. You put the uh, you, you put the hot stick there, hope that it goes well, and then when it stops, you find a different solution. Yeah. So... <laughs> Some shuffling bound to occur over the next couple of days with with the Colorado Avalanche forwards. Put it that yeah, way. Yeah, and how it all shakes out, you know, I'm, I'm. It would be great if we could get a timeline on, uh, on Lekkonen, but we know it's going to be a bit. So, yep. um, you know, we'll we'll see. Um, how it all how it all you know. It, this this is going to be a game. I think it's going to be a game by game, like just a question mark every game. Walking into it, what what exactly? Unless unless something really really clicks, I think it's just going to be game by game. Of you know, we'll see. We'll just see what they decide to try today. <laughs> um, and I tell you, uh, you know, with the Avs with the Avs deep into the playoff race that they're in, this does. This is hard because we've talked about them, you know, at this time of year, teams want to tighten screws and they yeah. really want to drill down into solutions. And now it seems like, look, if Landis Cog does come back and Lekkonen is healthy by the, you know, let's say, let's say Lekkonen doesn't play another regular season game. I don't, I don't know if that's the sure. case, but just estimate a time. Why not? Yeah. Um, just just because a month from today, uh, they're in Nashville, I think, playing their final their regular season game. game. Yep. So you're you're talking about uh, they don't have a lot of time to find answers here. Um, they are once again in like, hey, they just have to get through this mode. And instead of, hey, we're using this time to really figure out What's the combination? Because I mean, even with Lekkonen, they've been changing lines, trying to figure figure things out, trying to find something that works. And... Well, and, and like, there's some of A, some of B here, right? Like, obviously, Landon getting back in the lineup, you're expecting him to take at least a little bit to get back up to speed if he does come back. Uh, Lecky, the bouncing around, maybe there's a little bit of chemistry. But at the same time, certainly with Landy, he's played with some of these guys for a decade now. Uh so there's a baseline there that you have a little bit of confidence in. Yeah, um, the I would say that the the challenge especially is that if Landis Cog and Lekkonen are healthy in game one of round one and not before then, then you are figuring, you are using round one of the postseason to try and figure that out. And if you're really, 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 really good and you're a lot better than your round one opponent, then that might be okay. But if you aren't and you know, they are, you know, where are they? Where are they over you, the last, sure. where, where are they over the last 17 games? You know, what, what seed do they end up with? What's their matchup? If they end up on the road in Minnesota with a healthy Kirill Kaprizov, that's not the matchup I don't think that they want in round one, I'll say. Or if they fall to a wild card and they end up on the road going to a Vegas or a Dallas. Those are two pretty good hockey teams that they're going to try to be figuring those things out against. So it's, for me right now, looking at it uh, without having an answer, that's my concern, um, is that they aren't going to have any answers to any of these questions this year, and they're going to have to use the postseason to try and figure out how to play in the postseason like it's 
Well, let me let me ask you this then. How much of this can Nathan McKinnon mask? Certainly given the way he's played for the last month or so. Uh, just an absurd goal scoring pace for that guy. I get it. Some of those games, maybe not his best game overall, but the dude yeah. is just putting the puck in the net at will. <clears throat> uh, well, I mean, it helps. Like between McKinnon and Rantanen, and then if you have those top four guys on defense healthy, yeah. I mean, it sure it sure does make it like doable. You know, you have, you're not you have a bit more room for error at least. Yeah, I mean, it, but your your advantage goes down obviously with those injuries because it's oh we have these guys, but then here's our second tier of guys, and that second tier of guys has two pretty big injuries to it now, and. We'll just, we'll just, I mean, I'm not, I'm not in the business of doubting Nathan McKinnon at this point in his career. Um, so we'll just, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got full confidence that Nathan McKinnon can find a special level and drag the back, team around a little them. bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But all right. how far in a postseason series, how far into the postseason itself, I, you know, these are, it's really, it's really McKinnon, Ranton, and Makar. Though, like the the Holy Trinity, well, gotta, and even got to strap like, it on. Even then, you're saying, hey, if these guys can get you through through the first round, and you can get a Lecky, a Landy back integrated into the team, yeah, then you feel better. And you know, second round and beyond, hard carrying gets a lot harder. Oh well, <laughs> hey, if they end up a wild card. If they end up a wild card and they take on a Vegas or a Dallas and those guys get healthy and they beat that team, then who's going to stop them? <laughs> they, they are the odds, odds on favorite moving forward uh, to come out of the West once again. So, yeah, it's yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm not in the business of doubting Nathan McKinnon right now. Well, it's what, 12 goals in his last 13 games now, is it? Or is yeah, it 11 and 12? Like that, I man, forget, the, but. The very shocking development of the 4% on ice shooting percentage. Not being sustainable. Who could have guessed? Did not continue uh, <laughs> with a player that talented. Yep. You give that guy enough opportunities, puck go net eventually. <laughs> puck go net indeed. <laughs> On that note, we are brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Go over there. You bet $5 on anything, and you get $200 in free bets. So you can get over there, bet on whatever you want, and get some free money to play with. You can put it down on Nathan McKinnon to score a goal, and most nights since February has begun, you would make money on that bet. Some nights you'd even make money on McKinnon to score two goals in the night so not a bad bet to put money on mckinnon right now we'll put it that way of course you can bet on all sorts of other nonsense if you're into that thing i've uh i've been checking out a lot of csgo recently watching some esports if you want to bet on that that's an option for you uh if you want to stick to regular sports also plenty of that to be done as well i mean i i, I don't know is is cornhole a regular sport now? Is that what we're calling a regular sport these days? It's not a convincing face you're making. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe certainly one of the headliners of the Backyard Olympics. The Backyard Olympics. I'm here for the Backyard Olympics, all right? Happy to, to make some bets on Backyard Olympic events. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Uh, of course, plenty of other stuff. You can go bet on over at DraftKings. So get over there, download the app today, use the DNVR code to get the five dollars for two hundred dollars in free bets. You must be twenty-one or older, Colorado only. Other terms, restrictions, and conditions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook or the show notes down below for details. If you have a gambling problem, call one 800 522 4700 And it's void in Ohio. We are also brought to you by the delicious burritos over at Illegal Pete's. You can go over there, get yourself amazing fresh ingredients from Illegal Pete's. They also have happy hours from 3 to 6 p.m., some delicious margaritas that you can get over there. Highly recommend 
if you haven't been down to Pete's. You got to go check it out. Uh, no robots, though. Oh, robots. am I roboting? Sick. Love that for me. Uh, it'll stop in a, in a little bit. Uh, instead, get Illegal Pete's, brought to you by the Rudobot. Uh, <laughs> jump on it while you can. Get the food. Get the burritos. Get the margaritas. Uh, currently, for the entire month of March, Illegal Pete's will be donating $1 to Youth on Record for every Vodka Fresh press sold. So Vodka Press is also an option. Uh, you can stop by one of the 10 locations. Get yourself a Tito's Fresh Press. And you know that money is going to support Colorado's next big star. So go over there today. Illegal Pete's. Delicious. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, uh, look, AJ, I believe when we talked about it before the playoff push really began, the expectation for Colorado, the, the target they had to reach was 25 and nine. Yeah. And we knew that, uh, you know, the, the point was the, the goal of it was 50 points. Yep. Um, because they like immediately out of the gate were like, OTL, OTL. And it was like, mm. uh, <laughs> This complicates it because two OTLs is the same as a win on and a, like, a loss. road trip. Yeah. So it's like, uh... anyway, yeah. Um, coming out of that break, uh, early February, right? Yep. Yeah, because yep. they lost in the, uh, the Pittsburgh game. Ugh. Yep. So it was not a great start to that twenty that chase for twenty five. It was not. Got a lot better, and then it didn't do as better at the start of March. So, it, I, I, I don't know that they're realistically on pace to to have a fifty point stretch. They've had, uh, they've got twenty three right now. So, and there's what eighteen games remaining, seventeen games remaining. Yeah. Um, so they're not, I mean, that's doable. Sorry. Still doable. Not easy. You need to win 13 of those, essentially, to get 26 points. I'd put you one point shy. That put you at 49 points. Yeah. And that would be a 106 point season. Um, so uh, this was not what they needed to make the playoffs. This was what they needed to compete for the top of the central yeah. push for the central division title that that was a if dallas stays on the same pace if they've picked it up then that gets even harder uh if they fall off it gets a little easier of course so that is uh that was the kind of conversation that we had hey 50 points the the the, the push for 25 wins to chase down the central division title Yep, a lot harder today. I mean, you know, going 13 and 4 is not impossible. This upcoming stretch of games kind of need both of these on the back to back, I think, to have a realistic charge like that. Yeah, and but but I mean, you do look at the upcoming schedule. Like we look at this week, right? And we're like, "Ooh, this is a tough week." Uh, because Toronto obviously is that's a good hockey team. Uh, that who knows? Like we'll see. Sure. sure. And then Ottawa on the Sega Baba, where Ottawa does not play the day before, so a rested Sens team. Then you go in and you have a matinee game at Detroit. Yeah. A team that um, you know, both Ottawa and Detroit like helped kick start. Colorado trying to get right and trying to get and get going when they blew both of them out back to back in ball arena. But those two teams have since turned their seasons around and played substantially better hockey since those games got played. Detroit's record recently, not great. Uh, but those are still teams like with something to play for is what I'm getting at. So they could be, they could be challenging games in their own right. And then, you have a six-game stretch when you get back. A six-game stretch where you play Chicago, Pittsburgh, Arizona, Arizona, Anaheim, Minnesota. Yeah. So your baseline is four and two. 
that that's like worst case. Yeah, like your your like baseline in that part would be four and two. Yep. Uh, and you get both Pittsburgh and Minnesota, not on back to backs, uh, and home, and yeah. both of them at home. The Anaheim game is a back to back, but it's a late start, yeah, and they get... and they play at Arizona in a matinee game the day before. So they're in Anaheim that evening. Yep. They and then they it's really more than a full day's rest yeah. given the late start from the one o'clock start. Yep. And then if you switch over into the March schedule, uh they have a home game against Dallas, which is setting up to be a pretty important hockey game. Uh then they have their last road trip of the season, the last like actual road trip. Yeah, uh, where they play at San Jose, at San Jose, at Los Angeles, at Anaheim, and then finish uh, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and then on the road at Nashville. Yeah, so pulling it's, it's thirteen out of seventeen is going to be hard because you'll basically need to win all the team. You'll need to win all the games against all the bad teams, and then you'll need to to win some of these games against. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, Dallas, Los Angeles, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Nashville. Yeah, I mean, to realistically do it, you have to go at least two and one in your next three here, let's say. Yeah. Uh, you basically cannot lose at home. Yeah. Which is where they've been worse. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. They've been worse at home than on the road by a, a decent bit. And then obviously the, the biggest games are that Dallas game would have to be a must win in regulation. Probably, yeah. Yeah. You cannot give Dallas a point. Yep. Um, the Edmonton game near the end of the season probably will have some significance as well. Assuming, you know, things don't settle. That might be one where you're like hoping that Edmonton. Uh, like has clinched everything that it needs yeah. to clinch. And so and it's they like are maybe just they big chilling. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe they sit a guy or two and you're just like, yeah, I doubt it, <laughs> but you never know. <laughs> but at this point, that's what you're hoping for. So it, it's, it's not looking great for the abs to push all the way to the top of the central. Yeah. Um, perfect world. They win both their games in hand. They're three points back of Dallas. That's what they would have to make up. Um, You know, the Avs technically don't control their own destiny there. If Dallas were to, even if they lose the game to the Avs, they'd still be one point up on the Avs. If if Dallas won out, they would be the Central Division champs. So they need a little bit of help, but not not enough to really call it help. Essentially, yeah. the Avs control their own destiny here. Yeah, I mean, like, you are talking about, like, they need one point's worth of help. Right. Like, like great. Um, like, that. that's not a ton of help, but you have to really, really take care of business at a high level. And what put them in this position was the four losses in five games. Yeah. Um, you know, the the Seattle game, just that second point. You're talking about, oh, they need one point worth of help. There's the point. If they would have just closed against Seattle, it's not like the it's not like two wins in five games is stellar, but they would have put them in a position to continue controlling their destiny. And um, that is, well, I mean, not even getting into tiebreakers. That just puts them on even ground. And the I would say right now they would lose. I'm just throwing the tiebreaker out the window. I, I don't think the Fs are pulling that one back. Um, It'd be tough, yeah. For Dallas's schedule, they're not in the easiest part of their schedule at the moment either. Tonight, they have Vancouver on a back-to-back for themselves. Um, Then they play Edmonton and Calgary, both on the road. Obviously, that Calgary team, probably still close enough to be very desperate to win games like that. Yeah. Uh, Then they go Seattle and Pittsburgh. Then their schedule gets easier. The back half of or the back end of March, they get Vancouver, Chicago, Arizona with a ton of rest in between everything. Um, And even even the end of their schedule now doesn't seem that crazy with Nashville after the Avs game, Philadelphia, 
Vegas, that's a real game. Detroit, probably not a real game at that point. And they end with a back-to-back against St. Louis, which is not real games either. Yeah, so, and then the fight for home ice with Minnesota is something. Um, Minnesota's schedule, they still, like, they've got tough stretches here for, for Minnesota. Sure. Uh, doesn't start right away. They play at St. Louis tomorrow. <laughs> That's not as tough. And then they hang out for a couple of days, and then they have back-to-back at home. Both games are at home. So they have a back-to-back with no travel. Must What's be that nice. like? Yeah, I never heard of that before. Um, but they get Boston, Washington. And keep in okay. mind, no Carol Kaprizov for the rest of for these for the, for the, the games I'm about to list. They have no yeah. Kaprizov. So Boston, Washington. Then they go to New Jersey, to Philadelphia, then home against Chicago, then home against Seattle, and then on the road to Colorado. With no Carol Kaprizov, if they go 500 in that schedule, I think they've done well yeah. for themselves. Then they start off April with multiple Vegas games, too. Yeah. Then they Vegas, Vegas, and then at Pittsburgh. And then div- they, they finish up in the they Central They finish division. pretty. Yeah, the Winnipeg game could be interesting. but Yeah, the Winnipeg game will be on the second half of a back-to-back with a little bit of... They fly from Chicago to Minneapolis, so it's not a lot of travel. But they go from a, the late game the, the night before to it's an earlier start. So they won't have a lot of rest, even though there won't be a ton of travel. They'll get in, they'll get in late and then have that. So just saying Minnesota's got some, got some challenges ahead of them, um, especially with the Kaprizov injury and knowing what a, you know, what a huge part of their success he is, uh, you know, we'll we'll see how they handle that. Um, I sure would love to know what it's like to have a home back to back like that. It really we feels like the Avs have not had one. Yeah, they've had away and away games on back to backs. I don't know that they've yeah. had a home at home. Yeah, uh, I don't know that they have either. I, I they probably have, and I just don't remember it. But the back to backs have been rough this year for Colorado, no doubt about it. No, not those ones. There's an away away. Boy, have they really not had one this year? No, I don't see one, man. That's crazy. That's crazy, I dude. I didn't think they did. What is the NHL scheduler doing? Yeah, they've been uh, the back to backs have been tough this year. So I guess I I guess tough. you can count the Finland one, sort of. I get that one is technically an away game, right? But neither of those teams yeah. traveled anywhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's really the only one. They just traveled to Finland and hung out yeah. for a few days. And then right. Those games. So I guess I guess we'll count Finland. I'm cool that, with that. that. That's as close as the Avs get to one this year. I'll put it that yeah. way. And there was no travel, so <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so, AJ, in your opinion, have the Avs lived up to their expectations in this playoff push? Understanding where they're at, where they have to go. Obviously, there's a ton of extraneous factors here. The Lecky injury, EJ's injury, uh, some of the other lesser injuries that the Avs have been working through. Is this good enough, as an, or did you expect more so far from Colorado down this stretch run? Uh, I, I expected more, but not yeah. a lot more. We're talking like maybe two extra wins. Uh, sure. If they, to, to be honest with you, if they close the Pittsburgh game, Close the Tampa Bay game and close the Seattle game. Those are three points that I would just say, okay. I I would say even two of those, I think you're pretty all right with. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I think two of them is fair because you did have that giant comeback win over the Oilers. Yeah. Um, you know, so I I think that I really those are the ones where it's like, Left, it, left them, left them there. It's, it's interesting too because, as far as the standings are concerned, all wins are created equal. Yeah, they're all worth two points. Doesn't matter how you get there. A, the schedule does Until not tiebreakers. Then they're not created equal. Sure, sure. <laughs> tiebreakers do matter, but it's just not something I ever worry about. If the Avs end up in the second seed because they have less rows whatever (laughs) 
not a fight I'm going to worry about. Yeah, and it is it is a thing right now where um, looking at Minnesota, not Dallas, because Dallas kind of has them pretty handy. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, a has a big wins. advantage in regulation wins. But right now, um, with Minnesota, Minnesota has one regulation win advantage on the Avalanche. The Avalanche have two uh, rows advantage on Minnesota. So it's... they're in a good position to take the tiebreaker with the wild. They would need to do a lot of work to take, to, to catch up to Dallas. Um, they and they would to... really need yeah. Dallas to stop winning hockey games. Like they would need I, Dallas to not it, be very good. If they catch up in regulation wins to Dallas, they probably just blow by them in the standings anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of the reality of how those numbers work, unless Dallas is doing some overtime shenanigans to get two points on a lot of nights. Yeah. Um, also, if you know, in the world of you know, if the Avs were, if the Avs were to chase down Dallas, um, they would be in that top seed conversation out west. Yep. Uh, they are down in. A, they're down a little bit in regulation wins on. Vegas, they are down uh, a handful of rows as well. So they would need to do a lot of work. Ties are uh, bad for Colorado, to... basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Colorado Colorado's going to have to pass people in the standings. Yep. Because uh, their, their overtime success has really uh, been a big part of their, uh, like a third of their wins or something this year have come in overtime shootouts. Yeah, it's so. it's been a, quite a few overtimes for them. Yeah. Now, to be fair, Dallas also has a ton of overtimes. They just lose most they, of them. They, when they get to overtime, they just lose for the most part. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they only have three wins. Um, and 13 losses. Yeah. I guess that includes shootouts and the losses, but. Yeah, they're three and three in the shootout. Yeah, so 10 uh, proper OT losses. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, Minnesota is 7 and 4 in shootouts. That's a lot of shootouts. That dude. is a lot of shootouts. Man, how are you going to do that? I, I don't know. <laughs> Abolish the shootout. You know how I feel that, about it. Are the most shootouts in the NHL this year? It's It's got to be, dude. 11? Yeah, it is. Does anyone even... LA has eight. The Avs have seven. There's a couple. Yeah, San Jose. Yeah, there's seven. there's a handful of sevens. Um, yeah, but eleven double digits. Yeah, LA LA has eight, and then it's Minnesota at eleven, like far and away. Jeez, that's that's wild. Nobody out um, east. Uh, the only team out east with even six is Montreal. <sighs> East just finishing games, wanting to get to sleep, I guess. Oh, I should scroll up further. Carolina and the Rangers also have six. Still, not very many. Yeah, right. Uh, anyway, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, if you are working some overtime, make sure when you're done, you go get yourself a Breckenridge Brewery to relax. Uh, Breck Brew beer available all over the place in all 50 states at this point. You use the Breck Beer Locator online to find it near you of course if you're local there's eight on tap down at the dnvr bar so you can just come on down to the bar have some delicious ones there uh they also have dope merch on the website breckbrew.com uh you can go check out their farmhouse which is an amazing venue that we've been to a handful of times if you watch some of our shows from there awesome place to go grab a beer so go check them out breckbrew.com and then if you're like arturi lekkanen if you've been injured at work and it's not your fault, call 222-2222. Nice. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be at work. If you had a car accident, even if you weren't driving, if it was a rideshare situation, motorcycle, whatever, if you're injured and it was someone else's fault and you have not been compensated, Bacchus and Shanker has your back. They will get you what you deserve. You can set up a comp consultation, excuse me, with the number twos, or you can go to coloradolaw.net. Either way, they'll listen to you. If they think you have a case, they will take it on for completely free. It costs you nothing until you win your case. So you get compensated. You basically don't have to pay for it. 
It's the best way to get in and get what you deserve. Uh, they're great at what they do. They've been doing it for over 25 years. Everyone who's lived in Colorado for more than five minutes basically knows who they are. So, oh, okay, cool. Cool. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> go check it out. Bacchus and Shanker uh, today, a two number, coloradolaw.net. They will win you many, many, many dollars. Uh, once you've done all that, Make sure you also check out Game Time. Maybe you've got a little bit of money you made from Bacchus and Shanker. You want to go see an Avs game or a Nuggets game or any other game around the country. You can get your tickets at Game Time with the link down in the description below. They have used, they have provided tickets rather for over 15 million different users. Uh, you can jump on that. You can get whatever tickets you want under the sun. And usually prices are up to 60% off through game time. So it's a great deal all the way around. Go in there, find your tickets, find a great place to sit. Uh, they do have the, the seat locator. I always say not that big of a deal for Ball Arena. But if you're going to other buildings, make sure you check out those seats. Because sometimes there are really, really bad seats in Arena. And game time will give you a warning of that beforehand. So just be sure to jump on that one. Uh, Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. AJ, I wanted to look at some of the other playoff races around the NHL as well today. Um, because honestly, let's face it, the Avs are going to make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, we're sitting here looking at these standings right now, and the Avs currently sit seven points up on Nashville, and the Preds have a game in hand that I think disappears tonight. I believe so. It's kind of the bounce back and forth as they have days off, though. But yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, they do play at home tonight against Detroit. So, uh, But yeah, a seven a seven point lead. They have a game in hand. Uh, Nashville 7 2 and 1 in their last 10. The Avs 6 3 and 1. So they have gained, in 10 games, they have gained two points. one game, two points. Yep. Yep. And even if you even if you throw them the win for the game in hand, they still have to make up five points on Colorado down the stretch here. Yeah. Five points doesn't sound like a lot. Uh, um, but again, over the last 10, which included a stretch where the Avs lost four or five games, they made up two points <laughs> Yeah, two points got made up in 10 games so it's it i don't it's, it's so so there. hard it's so hard down the stretch to make up points like that this is true of mm -hmm. colorado trying to chase down dallas as well it's just really hard to catch good teams in this portion of the season so it would be tough for the abs to to drop out of the playoff picture in this one uh, honestly, it would probably be disappointing if they were to even drop into a wild card spot, given they have two games in hand on Winnipeg and are currently a point up on them. I mean, it wouldn't be wouldn't be hard, but it would it would require I said a really, 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 really big letdown. I think down the stretch, given the, the ease of the schedule, and especially because Winnipeg has played terribly of late. Yeah. I mean, three, five, and two in their last ten opened the door for all of these things to happen, uh, yep. and all you know, they were neck and neck with Dallas. That's not the case anymore. Um, their poor play opened up the door for Minnesota and Colorado to walk through, and for the moment, they have. Yep, anything is possible down the stretch. Of course, um, you look at that wild card spot. How? Is Nashville really in this fight? Is Calgary really in this fight for the wild card spots in the West? Edmonton and Winnipeg currently sitting in them. I mean, they are six and seven points back, and it's in the case deep, of yeah, in the case of Calgary, you're at sixty seven games played already. It's looking pretty grim. So you have a game in hand advantage on nobody. Uh, that's terrible math. <laughs> For them like that yeah it's they just, just not good it's just not good they would really have to go uh they would have to put together you know um, a nine and one in the next 10 to, to i think be yeah 
competitive a serious even. yeah yeah a serious push um because that would that obviously would put 18 to 20 points would put a lot of pressure on edmonton um seattle and winnipeg yeah i true at that point you're you're even trying to threaten for third in the pacific yeah and you know and minnesota is in a great spot here because uh, at at 84 points already with the last couple of wins that they've had, a couple of the OTLs since Kaprizov got hurt, uh, they've banked enough points that they they aren't in a major like they might they might eventually you know over the next few weeks they might drop down into the wild card, but they're you know when when you're 11 points up on Nashville you don't really look at them and think those guys are gonna catch me. Yeah, definitely don't. Don't think much about them, I imagine, if you're if you're Minnesota. Honestly, I would imagine Colorado probably doesn't think much about them. They're probably more focused on Minnesota and Dallas ahead of them than the teams behind them. So uh, maybe a good amount of not looking back down the, the stretch run in the West here. Yeah. If yeah. only because of the separation that's been created there. But yeah, it's I, I it's really hard for me to believe that Calgary, I mean, just the way that they've played, you know, you're chasing and you're yeah, four, it's four, been and so average. Yeah. Um, Nashville doing the same thing, but uh, they've played they've they've gotten the results. But also, you know, they sold at the deadline. Johansson is hurt. You know, yep, yep. is this just one of those stretches where they win some games? Because the Nashville's like this is how Nashville's kind of just hung around all year uh, is that it they will have some stretches where they play pretty well, but they don't ever sustain them. It's, and it, it, it they would more need like, to, yeah. to make the postseason. They would need the stretch Winnipeg they've already to had. to collapse, basically. <laughs> the 18 games they have left, they would need to put together about 30 games of very good hockey. And if yep. they could put 30 games of very good hockey together, you would think that they would have done it by now. I, yeah, I... I can't imagine it being sustainable, like you said, given what they decided to do with the deadline and, and move in the direction that they did, plus injuries. So you never know. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's stacked against them pretty. I mean, right now, I think we're looking at the likely playoff field. But if, uh, if Winnipeg the West, continues to flounder, uh, if Winnipeg really continues to flounder, then they're the ones that you're like, hmm. We'll say they, yeah, they could play their way out of it. I'd put it that way. Um, in the East nah, chat real quick chat. No, nine. we're not going to compare. Uh, we're not going to compare, uh, the lightning getting a 56 game season and then their postseason run. And then their the bubble Stanley cup, um, followed up by the 56 game season Stanley cup. No, we're not comparing. We're not comparing any of those, uh, to, an 82 game season, full 82, and then having the shortest off season in NHL history and trying to come back. Uh, not trying to take away what Tampa Bay did, but their experience as repeat champs is very unique for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll it will be in unrepeatable circumstances in NHL history. Yep. yep. Things broke for them. They did the job. They got it done, et cetera, et cetera. That's great, but. No, they are not comparable. Um, what Colorado is going through is much harder than anything Tampa Bay went through. Eh, just off topic, but yeah, could have could have maybe been comparable if Chicago had done the thing with the lockout season and gone back to back. Would have been close-ish, yeah. similar. Yeah, but I mean the the like several months between the bubble where you can get fully sure. healthy and you that, can... that one's pretty unique. Yeah. Yeah. And then following it up with, you know, the, the shorter season for sure, yeah. where you don't put nearly as much strain on this lack yep. an injury doesn't happen if they, <laughs> if it's a 56 game season. So yeah, where would, where, I mean, think about if the abs had only had to play 56 games last year. Yep. Like it, it's not an excuse, man. Good God. It is just reality, my man. It is harder to play through an 82-game schedule. Like, 
how many how many games did the Tampa Bay Lightning even play in the fifty six game season where they win the cup? Did they even I, play eighty two games I, that I whole how many. year? The difference between playing like seventy some odd games and playing the hundred that the Abs had to, followed up by the shortest off season ever. Like the rest and the grind and all of that, like those are very real components to why repeating is hard. Also, because like, going through an 82 game grind is really difficult. The randomness and the injuries well, and the way that hockey is. The thing to me is, you're not supposed to repeat. Like Vegas put the Avs odds of winning the cup again. It was like plus 400 to start. So <laughs> one in four, like 25 percent chance that the Avs actually repeat, which is insanely good odds to repeat. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's from that's from day one. That's before anything starts happening to you. Yep. And as we know, the abs, uh, the, uh, the 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 great injury, uh, the injury viz Twitter account. Yeah, that which um, has the insane amount of stacked war lost for Colorado. Yeah, but it also it also showed that the this has been the most injured defending Stanley Cup champion team in twenty years. Yep. And so you're talking like things that have been out of Colorado's control. I mean, it's just been bad circumstances. If you want to call it an excuse to look at something and say something bad happened to me. Okay. Think about that. The next time somebody smokes a guy at a red light or whatever, he's not doing anything wrong. Like, oh, you're making excuses. Like sometimes bad things just happen in life. It and for the like abs, that. that's been this entire season. They've done a good job fighting through it. They've like, they're where they are. They've they've earned their position for better or worse. They've earned the position that they are in 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 the standings right now, and we'll see we'll see if they can repeat or not. Well, I mean, the story's unwritten, but <laughs> they are nothing comparable to what Tampa Bay went through, and that doesn't take away from how awesome Tampa Bay was during their runs, and the fact that they got to three in a row is a spectacular accomplishment. Yeah. I, I, it's insane that, but that they were they able made, that. They, they make three Stanley Cups, and only one of them comes in an 82-game season. And they don't win that one. Granted, yeah. that was their third one, so there's some context there as well. But Of course, but you look at what was one of the differences. They were so hurt. Yep. Braden Point, those things. like They were so broken down because the grind of an 82-game season is different. It's true. When you have five months before the sprint bubble playoffs, you know, you pretty everybody, healthy, yeah. everybody walked in healthy. And then you have a 56 game season followed by a postseason like you. The the grind is not it's just not the same um, as as if you if they had done that via three straight 82 game seasons plus, you know, continuous playoffs that happened right away sure. or whatever. So. I am a definite believer the regular season is too long because I think that 56 game season really opened everybody's eyes to like, Hey, you what know what's like is... when they go full bore every night. Yeah. yeah like this is actually kind of cool. What if we did, what if our schedule was more like 66 games, maybe 70 you know, ish games. You just get a lot less games that don't matter with. Yeah. Like well, and, and by the time you get to 82, it's like, has a lot changed. No, I, 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 when you get to 82, it feels like, you know, the first month of the season just doesn't mean that much. It doesn't mean nothing. You can establish yourself mm -hmm. with a lead that you can coast with. But if you get out to a slow start, no better proof than the abs that the first month of the season, if you play poorly, just doesn't matter that much. I mean, if you, if you're like terrible. Like, sure, you, you look if at if you go zero and ten or something, yeah, yeah. But... Like you can you can bury yourself at the start of the season to the point where you need to play seven hundred hockey for the next six months to get back into it. But uh, yeah, it is. I I definitely do think that the fifty six game season uh, was a was a great example of like this isn't quite enough, but we're closer here than I think the 82 games. Yeah. Because right now the abs at 65 games played. I'm pretty good. Like I'm, if they yep. were wrapping this thing up in 72 games and we were talking about this being the last two weeks of the regular season, I, I think that's right around, right Correct. around where I yeah. like the, where I would like to, to see the season. Just, I'm here personally. for that. 
Uh, very quickly, just to cover all of our bases, AJ, can your Isles hold on to a wild card spot out in the East? I, you know, the big thing for me is that Sorokin is just, yeah, awesome. Just goalieing their way through. And that's, that is what, it, and given their injury issues recently too, like that they're here is super impressive. Um, I give them a lot of credit. I really, I was not a believer in them this year and they have fought through a lot of stuff. So, um, I, to answer your actual question, I don't think so. Sure. But. Pick your poison that, of that, Florida, that may Buffalo, be because and Washington. I'm, yeah. I'm really like more of like, I, 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 I kind of like Florida there. Sure. Because I think they just have like the healthiest mix of all three levels can be good. If Bobrovsky decides to show up on any given well, night, they're a good and, hockey and that's, team. Yeah. yeah like dude, I just don't know what to make of that guy. <laughs> Did he get paid and just say, cool, thanks. I'm living in Miami making 10 mil. I'm good. <laughs> Like, did the competitive spirit just totally drain away from him? I I don't know anything about him. I don't know what, I don't know how he's wired or anything. But from afar, it certainly looks like a guy cashed the check and was like. They just got to put him back on the force, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It, it, it's, it was an all-timer, for sure. It was a good one. <laughs> uh, it, it, a little bit surprised that the, the wild card race is as close as it is as it is in the East for a while there. It felt like even the top eight was just dead set out East. Still the top six are, are not close. The top three in each division are very, very set at this point. So there's not really a whole lot of racing going on there other than I guess, New Jersey and Carolina for the top of the Metro, but yeah. And Svechnikov uh, having what yeah, sounds like hurts. a serious knee injury really not just hurts Carolina's chances to win that division, but you take heading Svechnikov playoffs, out of that too. lineup, yeah. you know, but they not having think about how, how different do you feel about Carolina? If they have Andre Svechnikov and Max Patch already healthy. Yeah, it's a, a team we've talked a lot about as not having the dude. They lose what is probably the closest thing to the dude on well, their and team. They, we, we talk about them not having the guys in the postseason that can just give you an easy goal when you need it. Yep. And those are two of their best shooters right there. That's a, that's, that is... I definitely felt for them. And not just of my obvious and very blatant personal love I mean that who doesn't love the canes honestly but like you know that's a that's that sucks like that really does that's a rough one yep that and that you know that could be the difference between New Jersey shocking everybody and winning that division like it's one thing to be like a surprise we're a playoff team and it's another to be like oh we won a highly competitive division one of the best teams in the east at that point yeah yeah, and then I think they're probably setting up to get bopped, but I think so too. But that's okay. I mean, I how funny would it be Pittsburgh and and uh, you get Pittsburgh and Washington I, like sneaking in as the wild yeah. cards, and you have you have Ovi and Crosby as the spoilers <laughs> to the next that's generation. Weird like, times. Old guys rule, you know. Like, <laughs> hey, I just don't forget the lesson you learned last year with Florida. Never bet on the young team that doesn't have the experience. AJ, never that trust. Doesn't know it. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's certainly an interesting. Uh, <laughs> it's certainly an interesting conversation because if if Jersey, you know, Jersey will get the first wild card team mm -hmm. if they win Which that one. Is probably going to be Pittsburgh, but. Well, we'll you know we'll see. It's not like yeah. they've been world beaters. Yeah, it, like not they, they've won some games, sure. but they have had to jump through some hoops to do it's, it. Like, it's Pittsburgh's to lose. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that I think that's fair. Just uh, games in hand, they already obviously have the points yeah. advantage. Like they're. Are you really gonna bet against Sidney Crosby? Nope. Of getting not, in, not in that like, case, at very least. Are you really gonna do that? Like. It's, <laughs> This might be their last hurrah, but are you really going to do it? Yeah, could be interesting. I don't know, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, man. And I think if you look at the East yep. matchups right now, uh, 
you do look at you know Tampa Bay is going through what feels like a pretty typical late season lull where they're like these games are just not important. Hey, we're at the playoffs, cool. We do not yeah. care. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna get it all geared back up for the last ten to twelve games of the season. Yep. Get themselves finely tuned to go and tussle with Toronto. Yep. Um I don't know how you look at the first round and say that's that's the marquee matchup, man. Like that's uh, the one it's going to be the banger. The all of the East round one is going to be bangers though. Like <laughs> every single matchup on the East side I'm looking forward to in round one. No matter even really? like if Buffalo if was, gets in. If it was Boston and the Islanders, would you really watch that series? Uh I'd watch it just cuz I Boston's going to throw. <laughs> I don't know. I think if it was Boston <laughs> and the Islanders, I'd be like, "Oh man." <laughs> Hopefully they play when the abs play, so I have an excuse not. Yeah, there, you there you go. <laughs> That's like, the one they're out lead of. into the abs every night. So it's the... like, oh yeah, well, I'll watch the last ten minutes of all these games. <laughs> they can't. If there's a lead into the abs, those games are going an hour long, and the abs are going to have to sit around. So I'm out on that take. Not here for that. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm good. Any anything you wanted to add on these playoff races, AJ? I'm excited for him for once, because um, normally I'm I'm usually just like, oh, okay. But I think this year I'm really amped up to watch them, um, and I'm not nearly as abs focused as I was last year, where it was like, only one team matters. And, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Last year, I, I think everybody was just like locked into last season. Like, yep. This entire fan base, this whole community, everybody, we were on a mission from God. Blue it, brother it, style, it, right? Like there was definitely a sense last year of this was it. Like it, this was the year for the apps to do it. And, and I'm not saying they can't do it this year, but I don't think that feeling is anywhere near as strong this season. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And like nothing has gone right for the apps this year. Like you're just like whatever. It's hard to it's hard to be. It's hard to feel, for me anyway, it's hard to feel really, really amped up in a season where they felt cursed from day one. <laughs> it's, been, it's been tough, but, you know, maybe you get all the curses out in the regular season, or maybe this is only the beginning of the curses. You, you yeah. never know either way. Uh, for us, we're going to get out of here for today. Obviously, with the back-to-back coming up, we got you covered for both of those games in the next two days. And the game this weekend, full coverage here on the YouTube channel, here on the dnvr.com. Either way, we hope to see you for the next one. We appreciate y'all, and we will talk to you later.